So one of the things that I've noticed about uh, about this particular map is that almost not everyone, certain people, and by that I mean a certain character, can pass through right here, depending on the current state of that character. That's nice, but there is actually no way of telling if they can pass through it or not, unless they try. I thought about that. And I thought about how that isn't exactly a good way to uh, have this ability. So, what I thought is, why not make a visual indicator of uh, specific areas that you can pass through? So, uh... So I thought I would go ahead and do that. I actually have to add a sprite. One thing I am actually doing this stream that I haven't done before is I'm using a new program. This program. And I wanted to have this as the indicator. I thought uh, a white outline around a black dot, that's going to be visible generally no matter what. So I'm just going to export this, and I get a lovely resize uh, option, which I think is pretty great since I usually have to bump these up by 400. And I'm going to rename this to something like something like that. Lovely. I'm going to copy this and move it over to where do I want to move it over to? It wouldn't be necessarily invisible, as its state sometimes gets set to in, uh, to visible. Though it does default to invisible. I'm not entirely sure. I think I should put it in effect work. What is it? Oh, that's what that is. Let's see how this looks. Well, first, I want to set it on a uh, layer we'll be seeing. So, how about, uh, hmm, where could I put it where it will be? displayed properly. Above ceiling, or above base, doesn't allow for it to be seen since it's still below the ceiling. I could put it on ceiling, but I am a little finicky about that since, or I feel like it would be a little finicky. Though, if I ensure that these things always appear above the, or always have the Z order above the, uh, the ceiling, then it should work. Actually, I'm going to move these right here. And then I am going to do something in play code. Now, I won't be able to avoid uh, a certain situation in split screen multiplayer, but in theory, this should only be visible to the uh, individual who is currently using such an ability. So, 
So, for that, we need to add something somewhere. Where should I add it? Players? No. Site code? No, that's for the site object. I guess I will just go ahead and put it in its own group. Ah, that ended up all the way down there. I want this up here. So, what I will do is, uh, actually, I'm going to do for each object. Oh, yes, that's right. This is not a set of global object. Now I should be able to, for each object, this thing. There we go. I will then determine the distance between uh, the particular object and the player, but only if the player has a... Actually, I might be able to speed this up by... No, wait. Can I... Maybe. have that, but we also have, where is it? There should be something around, somewhere around here. Murderer of visibility? Ah, here we are. This. That way, this will only process for this. Otherwise, all objects, visibility? Visibility should be high for this. Then we have show, and then I need to modify this. about that. Oh. 
this here. And what character do I currently have? Three. That's good. I may need to use this controller. I think it might have player one. Oh no. Ah, perfect. Cool. Before it starts running code, I'm going to go ahead and save that so I don't lose things. That would be unfortunate. Just, uh, just waiting on the compilation pro uh, process to finish. Uh, taking a while, I'm not entirely sure what's going on. Maybe it's, I mean, I guess it's some large amount of code, but I don't think, I don't think it took this long previously. It has me concerned. Still compiling. Unless it just like stopped. Oh, I think it's still compiling. Alright, well, I'll take a look at what I need to do here. Oh, right. Should probably implement some uh, some of the other things, and it's still compiling. So let's see. The things that I want to include here are uh, objects that would be good candidates for uh, a dead body to be found within, and then some objects that aren't candidates for such a thing, but are just there for uh, background stuff. <laughs> Alright, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna close this out. I'm going to uh, close this project. It's gonna it's gonna tell me that. So uh, I'm going to uh, Gonna open that up. It's gonna tell me that it crashed, which is understandable since it did close unexpectedly. I guess it technically just says it closed abruptly after an error. I mean, I technically an error didn't happen. It just was an unexpected closing. Close, but don't open auto saves, because I had saved right before.
wait, that's not the thing we want. This is the thing we want. Okay, I think that one finished, and then it's going to compile this. Perhaps something in play code is uh, causing an error. I, I mean, it might just be taking a while, but I don't know. It's not sitting well with me. Play code. Play code. Since the only thing that I've added was this. thinking I should deactivate this, see if it does anything. Don't make me pull up task manager again. I will give it a bit. But I suppose whilst I give it a bit, I should be doing something. Also, I didn't Oh, I did. So, the thing I'll be doing is I'll be doodling. File. Hmm. What should I add next? I have a... I have a... I have a knife, a knife, a knife, a fork, and it actually compiled. Okay, then. I guess I can forget about that for a little bit. However, these do not seem to be working as expected. Though that is understandable. I did disable this piece of code. So, re-enable. Please compile it. It failed. Maybe I have uh, some piece of code not working here. Okay. It is weird because it did give me no errors. It says no errors right here. But maybe, just maybe. Somewhere deep down, it does have an error. So, I guess I gotta rewrite this code. So we want to get the square root of the, uh, of the square of the x distance and the square of the y distance. If I remember, that's the Pythagore Pythagorean theorem. I might be incorrect. Please do not murder me with your correct answers. Please don't yell at me. So, right, I can't just type in square. I have to type pow to plus pow to, and then like, yeah, that's precisely what uh, it should, or the, the syntax for that should be, so, next, characters.x plus 64 to go to halfway into the character. Over here should be characters.y plus 128 to go to the bottom of its feet, which these two combined will be right between the bottom of its feet. A good calculation point. In fact, if you know a particular game, not by me, you will know that that calculation point has been used at least once, I think probably multiple times, by at least 
one very big developer. If you don't know, then you don't know, but it's not that hard to find out. I suppose if you know the game. I guess that's not very helpful. In any case, this particular object that x plus half of its width. What do I do, th? Now, I'm almost certain that this is what it was for, but it seems like a little bit shorter. Ah, but I forgot the divide by 2. So we divide this variable by 2. One of the things you should watch out for in division by a variable is that your variable does not equal zero but since you are dividing a variable by a constant you won't have to worry about that though if you're dividing a constant by a variable or a constant by a constant or not a constant by a constant that would just give you a very particular result but uh, a variable by a variable then you'll have to watch out to make sure that uh, the denominator is not zero. It's very basic math. But that can sometimes bite you when you're programming. All right. All right. Let's see. Just uh, waiting for it to charge up. I'm going to hang out in here because it charges up faster. Not by much, but marginally faster. That's neat, but what if I go kind of in the corner? And also, will it uh, disappear? Indeed it will. Well, that's fantastic. This works the first way, or first time through. I, when I decided on how much this should charge uh, in, the, in the foyer, I decided on an amount that wasn't like okay it's obviously charging up uh really fast when you're uh just looking at it for a split second but an amount that you could probably deduce is faster if you paid close attention i wanted it to be between uh non-noticeable and uh obvious this potentially has the bonus that it won't encourage everyone to just hide out in here until their abilities are ready because it would take uh just marginally less time than it would to just have your ability charged normally but to certainly think that if you're already uh, close to being done charging that you might want to hang out here for the slight time benefit I don't know. I suppose that's my thoughts on it currently. I'm going to drop this to like 256 and see if the distance there is noticeable.
I've been thinking about uh, adding yet another character, but I'm not entirely sure if I want to do that this update. Especially because this update should have been already made. It's just that, well, I suppose before May 5th, I was very lazy. And then on May 5th, I gave myself the ultimatum. I guess it wasn't really much of an ultimatum. It was just more of a directive. Just gonna hang out here. That's not necessary. This is what I need. So I can tell when it's charged. I, I think my code also has uh, the necessary uh, instruction to resize this if uh, the window size is smaller. Not entirely sure. Haven't tested it. seems like, despite the fact that I'm pretty sure I'm over that distance, it still displays. Let's see. For each ammo pass indicator, if ability that I can load characters is one, then it will calculate this and determine if it is less than 256. I'm going to say 32 to give a little bit more of an extreme example. It should be less than uh, or it should be at a distance where I can get away from it easily and would know. But because I can't determine if, uh, at least not by eyeballing it, if I was 256, I was certain that I was, but I, I want to make extreme, extremely sure that it's not just me. window. Just gonna wait in here for a little bit. How you doing? Great. Great. Love to hear it. And now they're not displaying at all. All right. So I'm upping that distance a bit. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I see what I've done here. I've done something bad. I'm sure... Okay, well, I don't think anyone's here, so almost no one caught that. But if anyone watches this later, I'm sure you would be able to spot that and be like, no, stop it, you idiot. There's one thing you're missing. And it was very obvious. I'm prone to those kinds of mistakes. <coughs> <coughs> need to get hydrated. Where's my water? There's my water.
I, I feel like that is a nice balance between uh, super noticeable and uh, and unnoticeable. No, still. Would it be would it be visible if I was up there? There we go. This is causing me a few problems. Is there anything for hmm. Ah yes, left bracket and right bracket. Why didn't I remember that? I'm going to take another look at this. I don't know why I stretched that window when it's this one I need to stretch. Okay. <laughs> right, so the two terms. Characters uh, dot x plus 64, right? That's for uh, the middle of the character on the horizontal axis. Minus gimbal pass indicator dot x plus half of the width of said indicator divided by 2. Now, these wrap this so I don't divide this by 2. Though I don't think I would since of PEMDAS, but you know, I'd like to uh, wrap everything in parentheses, anyways. This entire thing gets wrapped in parentheses. And that should that should mean that this number will be subtracted from this number. I see one thing I could have done. Go. Will this work? Maybe. Although that really should just uh, uh, prevented it from working outside of where it should, rather than making it work inside where it should. I don't know. I don't know. So. Shouldn't it already have worked? I don't know. All right, you know what? You know what? I'm moving this here, this here, and a variable specific to each object. I'm setting that to that.
so I can then test this. What would I have to do for another weapon? What would be a good... Ah, a sword. I could do a sword. Though, whilst this is compiling, if it continues to compile, then I will do no such thing. Alright, let's open up the debugger. Get myself an, uh, the charge board ability and go down to this particular variable. I see. No, this is actually useful information. So currently, this. Oh, wait, hold on. Now we should get some useful information whether or not this displays here. The information that I thought was useful was hindered by the fact that it wouldn't appear there anyway because the code seemed to, or the code that is decidedly broken was broken. I'm just trying to figure out where I went wrong. So currently the variable is not there, which is good because it should until now. This is a, a strange thing. Is it measuring from? Well, that is strange. Something seems to be wrong. This should be taking a point halfway through the object. I'll try the top right corner real quick. Hold on, I want to. Modify this. Wait a minute, I see a bit of a problem here. Okay. Okay. Perhaps that was a, a big problem. And I'm sure anyone who have, will have ever seen this is like, please stop. Please stop. You're making a mistake and you can't even see it. which at least for this particular for this particular mistake I see it now hopefully this works hopefully it works
So the idea is that when you're close enough to a thing, uh, it will display. You will be able to see it. Wait, which thing did I fix? I think it was this one. Yeah, it's that one. So when you're close enough to the particular indicator, it will start displaying, showing you that that is a way to go. That is a viable option. There you go. It, it works, but I don't like the range on it. That's, however, not too big of an issue because I can go ahead and well, first. And add uh, uh, I don't want to go two hundred and fifty or I want to go with something between two fifty six and five hundred. Three eighty four. I think if I do something in uh, 1.6, the next update, I'll be probably adding like a few more characters and probably a few more things to the map or available to put into a map. Uh, who knows though? That's next update. I'm worried about this update. I suppose that's good range. Like, uh, maybe, maybe a little closer. So maybe I should go with the 512 that I originally didn't want to. Well, I want to see if the... Well, my original intention was to get the murderer to look at me. Well, I wanted to see if the uh, murderer would be able to see me. I suppose that's one possible issue, is that uh, if you are stuck in this, that uh, you could potentially wind up stuck, but that's really only a problem for like, what, uh, 30 seconds, something like that. But that's also only a problem if the map designer uh, builds with a lot of collision pieces. And uh, doesn't worry about how the uh, the player might get trapped in there. Ah yes, I know I could uh, get that bag right there, but. Uh, But why not test the uh, the police behavior of giving a giving an evidence bag? Also, if I saw that correctly, I need to adjust the range on that. 
also I need to adjust a few things on this. Also, I'm going to prevent the flicker issue. I think the murderer might be stuck. I think another thing I might do is uh, if the murderer gets stuck for even longer than what they do, instead of looking to the or even longer than their first attempt to get out of being stuck, uh, I think what I will do is just look at the closest, uh, closest node and try to go to that one. And then if they can't, then uh, mark that node as ineligible, go to the next one, and so on, uh, so forth, so on. Or something. Something like that. Now I think about it, 128 uh, distance is one thing, I, one and a half, I think, one and a half more, so 384 plus 128 plus 64, 576. So now that I have that down, or at least theoretically, I did just change the range and didn't test it, but I, I feel like that's not going to be too big of an issue. Now that I have that down, also this still would display over the network, but since I would want to make the parity as strong as possible between network and split screen play, I'm not going to concern myself with that. The next thing I should do is, well, I should actually take a look at what I have in here for, uh, stuff. So I have uh so I have forks, knives. I also updated uh the spinning graphic for uh for our first lovely character. I have lava in here. I think this was supposed to be like something underneath uh like some grate so that uh, uh, so that it would give it like uh, because the grates are supposed to be uh, see-through or at least it's supposed to be like opaque but then have transparent uh, like completely transparent uh, pixels so you would see underneath it and then I wanted to have something animate underneath it so I had to make like a stretchy sprite thing for it. If I remember correctly, that's a, a tile sprite. What do I have in here? Because I'm pretty sure I have more than just what I what I have implemented there.
for an armor desk. All right, uh, hold on. Sprites, objects. In objects. We have a desk. Potential victim objects. Ah, yes, we have a refrigerator. I guess they rip the uh, thing off the refrigerator when they search it. Do wait, hold on. Do they also break open the fridge? Huh. I don't know what I was thinking back then, but I'm pretty sure uh, you would at least notice the missing tiles, so they would have to actually be bro uh, broken open. You can also find the cabinets. You, uh, the crate makes more sense because you actually have to open it up, breaking it open, or at least uh, opening it in some way. What do I have for a potential weapon? Nothing. I have nothing for that. I have rocks and trees. Though those trees don't look very well placed. So I think I'm going to go with a crate next. Is that in here? No, it, it's not. I really thought it would be in there. Not items, objects, objects, potential victim objects, great. Zero, one, and two. All right. Implement a crate. I have to actually add the object for that. I think in the previous version, previous version of MBI, I had implemented all objects as just one, one object. Like all the visual objects were just sprites for one object. Then again, I didn't have to do any updating on uh, those objects because I made it. Oh, right, already at the, they're at the bottom. So, zero, one, two, and three will have the unopened thing. Because again, if I do add rotations to an object, they will take up four uh, animations. I actually uh, made a sprite of the uh, the victim currently alive. 
but you know because I needed a visual for like a dead person I had to actually uh, make a victim so it's just I whenever I make something new I call upon that sprite and then modify it let's see so I want to change one of the uh, I should probably set this to a uh, global object first there it is and eligible victim object we add a crate I could also do this for the desk but it's a really nice desk and I don't want to do that to the desk Now I can go ahead and create. I'm going to say that the search time for opening a crate is going to be like two and a half seconds. Because like, if, one, if you don't have a crowbar, this is going to take a really long time. But also, this is a game, so let's not think too much about it. Except for the people who will t think too much about it. In any case. Oh, do I not have displacement anymore? I thought I had displacement. Is there a displacement value somewhere around here? What's the displacement uh, value mean? Probe? No. This, okay, it's just displacement, uh, displacement X or displacement Y. No spaces, which wouldn't be a thing. And uh, no dots, which would be a thing. Oh. So for this, I would like to add 64. Because it goes to the middle, and then because it's about the same size as the character, it is the same size as the character, that is, it will go to the bottom between the feet. This object, however, needs to be a crate. I also do need to set these into invisible marks. Oh, my working timer's up. And uh, <clears throat> uh, then they'll be invisible. But right now, I guess. It might be a little bit more helpful to have them visible. Hmm. Still see a problem. Armor displacement Y. Ah, great. It's not even set up. Sixty four. Which let me just take another look. 
interactables variable dot interact dot display and that's why it's not working it's because it's interact dot displacement and this would be the same way Yeah, I can I can say that this collision needs to be modified. But let's see how this works out. So uh other than the corner and just by a hair, I can access it from the from the side. This is still not working. Which I remember is because it's not an interactable object. I plan to stream at like 12.30, just so that way I have more time to not stream. I can get around my own rules a little bit. Yeah, I, I think that might be about right in terms of distance. Because it gives you a little bit of leeway with discovery. This box is still not interact. Ah. Uh, uh -huh. Okay. Um, so I might want to increase the range on this by a hair. Just like, uh, like... A few things. Perhaps giving uh, different things, uh, different search times, is going to give people a little bit more depth in the fact that they might want to optimize and search the fast things uh, first, and then search the slower things later, which might actually give uh, map makers a bit more leeway, or uh, a bit more, not leeway, but uh, the ability to design really good maps, which this, I just noticed that this is probably not the best place to put such a weapon. All right, well, my timer ended, and so at least for a little while, this is going to be it. If you were here, thank you. I, I don't see anyone here, but if you were here, thank you. If you are here later on YouTube, when this video goes on YouTube, thank you as well. Uh, this video should be available on YouTube at 8... Uh, 8 a.m. tomorrow.
should be. Remember, should be. Uh, but again, if you are here, thank you. And this will be until about an hour. This will be goodbye.